Hello and welcome to Understanding the CalPad System. This is part one of what's going to be a three-part, yeah, maybe four-part series on trying to understand what is a very challenging and complex student data system. Uh, make that a little bit easier uh, for newbies to understand. So this is my own work and uh, isn't associated or affiliated in any way with the California Department of Education or any vendors mentioned in the presentation. So just understand that. Basically, CalPADS is the system for collecting uh, enrollment information, um, student demographic information, uh, even parent uh, data, uh, and pro federal program and state program data for K-12 students in California. It replaced the old CSIS system, um, and it's still in the process of being developed. Uh, they've added the, amend the assessment uh, document component, and that is still in development, um, but we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the lesson. There's basically three reporting periods in a typical year and they're called fall one, fall two, and end of year. We're gonna focus in this presentation only on fall one data requirements and processes. Uh, future presentations will talk about the other. So what data is collected in the first period, fall one? Well, for all students, their name and de general demographic information, including your ELA status, your primary language, where you were born, all of that's captured. It also requires each student to have a unique 10 digit SSID or state student ID number. Um, and all the students do. It also captures enrollment information. So who's attending what school and when have they exited and, and returned, et cetera. And as needed, it'll capture English learner information and whether or not the students are enrolled in any state or federal programs even includes uh, disciplinary information, but that really um, isn't captured until the end of year. But I put it down here because a lot of schools forget to document their disciplinary uh, information, specifically suspensions and expulsions, which will be required for the EOY end of year reporting. So it's probably a good habit to get into that uh, now and start documenting that before the end of the year rush. Also important are these program enrollments for free and reduced lunch, special education, gate, et cetera, because uh, a lot of these are tied to uh, funding resources. So uh, very important that um, by October 7th of each year, well, actually the first Wednesday of each year, you document uh, all of your students and their enrollments in all programs so that that information can be uploaded to the CalPAD system and certified. The process of certification really boils down to this. You're required to upload three or four files of student information. So the first file is SSID or SE enroll, SENR enrollment file, um, which basically figures out, okay, who owns who and uh, does every student have their own unique SSID number. The next file that you have to upload is a student information file which has more of the student demographic information than the original file. And the third file is the student program file. Now, this is a little bit dated. I don't even have the um, student uh, ELA status, the English learner status file, which is yet another file. But the spirit of it is you need three or four files to upload for fall one. And then if you upload all the files correctly and you don't have any uh, fatal errors in that, you can actually certify uh, the data and it goes through a two-step approval process and then you're done with fall one. So essentially, in a nutshell, it's uploading three or four files, which sounds easy enough, um, and then you verify and, and validate and certify the data for fall one. Now, seems easy enough, but if you're a typical school, you're using either PowerSchool, Illuminate, or Aries, or Infinite Campus, one of the four or five major uh, student information systems, 
the process really looks like this. You first have to validate your data in PowerSchool or in your other SIS system, extract it from that system, upload it to CalPads, validate it in CalPads, and repeat that process for each file. So the SSID files, the SINF files, the SPRG files, until your data is uh, matching um, between your student information system and the CalPad system. So it's laborious, but it gets results. If it seems like a lot of work, it is. <laughs> um, I used to track uh, for the schools I would support the enrollment errors, and you have to keep working on them until you scrub all of them clean, so to speak, and get to a complete state for the validations. The CalPads calendar, um, really, again, it's a year-long process. So fall one uh, is before fall two, which has to do more with staff data and course and section enrollment data. And then the end of year process, which actually doesn't even occur until you, the school year is over. It's more appropriate to talk about certification windows than deadlines for CalPads because even though the fall one certification deadline is usually at the end of December, right before the holiday breaks, winter breaks, um, it's not a good idea to wait until the last day to uh, certify CalPads. It's not going to happen. It's if you, as you understand the iterative process of scrubbing your data back and forth, you're going to realize that you probably should start as soon as possible when the window opens or even before making sure your data is accurate in both your student information system and in CalPads in order for you to certify on time. A big challenge at the beginning of the year are students who move from school to school because sometimes the previous school doesn't exit the student out uh, and you have to communicate with that school and the office manager and try to convince uh, the school to uh, disenroll that student in their records so that you can enroll the student officially in your school. So it does require some cross-school, cross-district uh, communication and effort. And then if you do certify without any errors by the deadline, that usually opens up the possibility for an amendment window in which you can make further changes. So when I assist schools, I coach them on, let's make sure we have no uh, fatal errors so we can at least certify, even if our data is incomplete, we can always fix it in during the amendment window. So the fall one amendment window uh, will extend even till usually the beginning or middle of, of February. The same process for fall two and end of year, but we're not going to go into that yet. Here's another visual for looking at the fall one uh, window. School starts here around you know mid-August or early September. You've got this period of time to start entering your data into your student information system. Census day is the first Wednesday of every October. And then you've got between there and uh, this de December date to actually do the certification. If you complete that process without any fatal errors, it'll open up an amendment window, which will run till the beginning of February in which you can make further changes. The fall to and end of year sort of piggyback on this, but again, we'll discuss those in depth uh, in the next video, part two. So this is end of part one. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I talked too fast, but that's that's because I was an elementary school teacher. It's part of the job. Uh, if more information, check out my website at schooltechnologyleadership.com. Thanks for listening.